In John's Gospel, there is no institution of the Eucharist narrative at the Last Supper. John chapter 6, which is the whole beautiful bread of life discourse, really takes the place of that, that institution narrative that we find in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But what is present in John's narration of the Last Supper, which is not present in the others, is the foot washing. The astonishing fact that after the Last Supper, Jesus stands up and washes the feet of his apostles. The action of a slave, something completely unexpected. That the master, the Lord, the teacher, the rabbi would get down on his hands and knees and do the work of a slave was unthinkable. No wonder Simon Peter resists Jesus washing his feet. In that one solitary act of service, the Lord completely subverts all human ambition and all pride. Um, Scott Peck, who is a noted uh, Christian psychologist, said that it's the Holy Thursday Revolution where Jesus subverts the established order of things. So if in our unredeemed state, we're always trying to climb to the top, be number one, have people serve us. Jesus subverts all that. He's on this downward path of mobility where he gets down on the floor. He gets down as low as he can in order to serve and lift everyone else up. And he does it purposefully to give us a powerful example of what it means to be a Christian, to be of service to others, to literally and figuratively wash their feet. When I did mission work in the Dominican Republic, I always loved the foot washing at Holy Thursday because people walked from distant villages to come to mass, often barefoot or just with sandals on. So when you washed their feet, the water was actually filthy. It was gritty. There was something real about that. It's probably how it was in the original a Last Supper experience. For us here in the States, if you know you're getting your feet washed at the last at the Mass, you probably wash them before you come to Mass so that you're not embarrassed. When you think about it, it's probably harder to have somebody wash your feet than to wash somebody else's. It's harder to receive at times than it is to give. So when we give, it's on our terms. When we receive, it's on someone else's. And there, there's a bit of pride in that. So part of our, our Christian example is not only serving and loving others, but having the humility to let others serve and love us. In Holy Thursday, in the Last Supper, on the cross, Jesus serves us. He calls us to both receive and give, to love and to be loved, to sacrifice, but also to accept the gifts of others and to allow them to serve and love as well.